The Couple Next Door, written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunt. Betsy, go ahead of Mommy and open the back door, will you? Yes, Mommy. Goodness, there's the car out there. Daddy must be home. Thank you, dear. Oh, my arms are just paralyzed. Look out, let me get these groceries on the table. Yeah. Daddy? Close the door, Betsy, now. Don't slam it, either. Oh. <laughs> well, I got home early. I wondered, wondered where you were. Shopping for groceries. Hello, Daddy. Well, hi. How's my girl? Fine. How come you're home so early, dear? Well, I couldn't work at the office. They're tearing down a building next door. Boy, the racket. Oh, I'll bet. Look what I got for you. Ah, uh, why? <laughs> Go take your coat off, Betsy, and hang it up. Look, oh, dear, so many little sacks here. Now, let's see which ones have... Something good? And yes, they have the most marvelous display of really fresh fruit, and you love fruit, so... Oh, here, here. These... Oh, pick I'll that get up, will you, Dan? These wonderful white seedless grapes. Oh, love hey. Those. That's one sack full, and then they had some wonderful bananas. Oh, I got two big ones. Oh, look, in this sack, honey. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. And here, I think these are pears. And this sack has apples. Look at these marvelous big apples. Aren't oh, they nice? yeah, gee, yeah, thanks, honey. You know I love fruit. <laughs> no. Well, since you're home early, I'll get the tuna fish casserole I planned fixed and get that in the oven, and then I'll put the groceries away. And I'll put the fruit in a big bowl so you can help yourself when you want to. Here, take my coat in, will you? Home yeah, sure, go. sure. What building are they tearing down? Oh, you know, that old office building right in back of ours. They're going to put up a nice new one, but that'll take months. So I guess we're in for a lot of noise for some time. Oh, yes, hammering and riveting oh, over. Say nothing of the steam shovel oh. they'll have going when they get to digging the foundation. Oh, honestly, yes. What's the matter? Oh, this wonderful new can opener you got is worse than the old one. What do you mean? Well, I mean it doesn't work. It doesn't grip the edge of the cans, and then if it does, it takes gargantua to turn it. I paid $14 for that can well, opener. Well, I can't help it, dear. It doesn't work. Try it yourself. Well, Pete says that's why I got a really good one. I suppose it'll last a lifetime. Well, here, Let try me... it. I guess that's why it does last What's a the... lifetime. You can't work it, so it doesn't get anywhere. Hey, well, what in Sam Hill is the matter with this thing? Maybe you didn't fasten it on the cupboard properly, Oh, of dear. course I fastened it on the cupboard properly. There's only one way to fasten it. Look, it's, it's, this, it's this part that doesn't work. Well, it, it hasn't it... worked ever since you got it. Fourteen dollars. I know. Well, I know. it's going back. Where's the screwdriver? Well, it's going back. Well, don't take it off. Now, dear, I want to start dinner. I'll use the old hand Look, can. Look, I'm not going to, not only going to do it now, I'm going to take it back right now. Oh, let's have dinner early for $14 a dollars I paid for well, that Well, dear, thing. we've had it a month now. I they don't care how long it. we have it. They're going to take it back. I'll talk to the manager. Well, they may not take it back. Where did you get I it? Get down here at that appliance place in the shopping center. I'm going down there right now. Can yeah. I go with you, Daddy? No, 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 no. Daddy's going to hurry now. Oh, I got... take her. She doesn't see much of you All anyway, right, come along, Betsy. Come on, get your coat on. Hurry up. I'll bet they won't take it back. Golly. We've had it a month, dear. They darn well will take it back if I know anything. I'm not paying $14 for a can opener that doesn't work. Boy, that burns me up. Well, I am going straight to the manager. A little dinner music, baby? Oh, you like that. And you like these beechnut pears, too, don't you? Sure, I can tell. Yes, they do taste so good. Do you know where beechnut pears come from? That's right, from beechnut baby land. Uh-huh, it's true. Beechnut baby land's a very special place where every beechnut baby food gets lots of loving care. Yes, you just know it. Like these beechnut pears. You just know that every one they picked was a real beauty. That's why they have such a natural, sweet, fresh flavor. Such good food nourishment for baby to grow on. Get the best for your baby. Get Beechnut Baby Foods. Beechnut, the most babied food in the world. <laughs> Look at this. Now, hang on to me, Betsy. They seem to be having a sale. Let's go. Go? We just got here. i got to return this can opener. Now, look, if you didn't want to come, you should have stayed home. There's so many people. I know, darling. Now, hang on to Daddy's hand. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, please. Joe! I've got... Joe! 
Have we got any oh. more of those toasters, 1057B? Look, excuse me, could I just ask Joe, you... Joe, call down to the stock room, will you? Excuse me, I was wondering if you could You'll tell You'll have me. to wait your turn like everybody else. I got a customer. No, no, that's all right. I, I don't want to buy anything. I, I just if want... If you don't want to buy anything, you mind getting out of the way? We're well, jammed up here now with people who do want to buy. Now, there's only two of us on this counter. Where is the manager? Joe, what about that toaster? No, no, no. Where can I find a manager? Look, I... bud, I got a customer. I can't do six things at once. You can at least answer me, can't you? I want to find the manager. I don't know where he is in this mob. Oh. Ask over at Section 5. Section 5, thank you. Joe, Honestly, I never... 1057B. Uh, can we go home now, Dad? No, we are going to Section 5. Now, come on. Now, look here. I have been to Section 5. I have been to Section 8. I have been to Section 14. I, I am not getting any satisfaction whatsoever. Any satisfaction whatsoever. Now, surely somebody around here can stop long enough to tell me where I can find the manager. Do you, by any chance, happen to know where he is? Well, no, no, I don't. Well, do you see him anywhere? If I, if I just knew what he looked like. Well, no, no, I don't see him either. Look, I paid $14 for a can opener, and it doesn't work. I'm a little bit burned up about well, it. Well, I don't blame you. Well, hello, little girl. Yeah. Hello. What's your name? Betsy. Betsy. Oh, what a lovely name. Yes. Well, you certainly have a lovely little girl. Yeah, look, the darn thing was supposed to last a lifetime. $14. Well, Four my goodness, for $14, it ought to last a yeah, lifetime. Well, that's, that's, what, that's what I think. Well, look to heck with the manager. I can't spend any more time. I've been here 40 minutes already just trying to get somebody's attention. Oh, dear. Now, look, I realize this is not the section where I got the can over there, but do you suppose I could return it here? Well, I, I don't know. Look, I would certainly appreciate it if you take it back for well, me. Well, I'd, I'd be glad to help you, but I've got a pot roast on the stove, and I, I won't be here any longer than just to get some fuses. One blew out. Well, you, 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 you don't work here? Oh, my, no. I live upstairs in an apartment. I, I just came down to get a fuse. Oh. But I... I can't get anybody to wait on me, Oh, either. I beg your pardon. Look, I am awfully sorry. I mean, you know, no hat and coat. I oh, thought that's all right. I worked... enjoyed our little chat, <laughs> and it was so nice to meet your little girl. Oh. I live alone, and I, I don't get a chance to talk to many people. Oh. My daughter's married and lives in California, right near Hollywood. Oh, oh, oh that must be very nice. Yes, she now... seems to like it very much. She sees a lot of the movie stars. She just wrote me that she saw Clark Gable the other day. Oh, oh well, uh-huh, that must be nice. Well, it's nice to talk to you. Come on, Betsy, dear, let's get... Bye, Betsy. Bye. Let's go home, Dad. I am not going home until I return this thing. Excuse me, El, excuse me, clerk. All I want to know is where I can find the manager. Could I get your attention for just one minute? Just... Oh. I want the manager. I want the manager. Now, look, brother, I'm busy. I don't care how busy you are. I demand some attention and some consideration. I have spent one hour, one hour in the store trying to get some satisfaction for a defective can opener. Let's go, Dad. And you be quiet. I want to go home. Oh, boy, if there's anything I hate, it's some guy that ain't nice to his kid. Now, look here, pal. Now, you look here. Don't call me pal and don't call me brother or bud. I am a customer. I paid $14 for a can opener. Go on, tell it to the manager. Don't tell it to me. I sell television sets. I don't sell can openers. I would like to tell it to the manager. I can't find him. Well, I, I think he's gone home now. Gone home? I don't know, bud. Try the second floor. Oh, come on, Betsy. <laughs> I'm very sorry if you've been inconvenienced. I've been right here in my office all the time. Well, nobody seemed to know it. I have spent one hour, one hour and ten minutes, to be exact, trying to track you down. Now, 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 have a chair. Do sit down. Boy, I tell you, the old days of the customer always being right have gone with the wind. Now I'm sure we can come to some settlement. Now, what seems to be the trouble? I didn't come for any settlement, as you put it. I came to return a can opener, sir, and I have been all over this store, and not one salesman, not one salesman well, would... Uh, I expect you, unfortunately, must have spoken to our extra help. We always put on extra help when we have a sale, and sometimes they aren't as polite as we like. Polite? Look, I walked in this door annoyed. I will admit that the can opener, for which I paid $14, doesn't work, and quite prepared to discuss this matter amiably and politely. The, 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 the first clerk, the first one I talked to was so rude to me... Well, I can't that, tell that, you that, how that sorry I, I Well, I can tell you that in the past hour... Past hour and ten minutes, if uh, yes, you please. Yes, yes, yes. I do apologize. It's not as though I bought a $2 can opener or a $5 can opener or even a 10 I bought a $14 one that was supposed to last a lifetime, they told me. Oh, oh yes, yes, I know. Uh, and it is not satisfactory? It is not. 
And in what way is it not satisfactory? It doesn't open cans. Yes. Uh, well, uh, how long have you had it? One month. Oh, 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 well, now, we don't accept merchandise that has been purchased more than ten days before. Well, you're going to accept this merchandise. My poor wife has been struggling with this thing for a month, and she, she didn't tell me about it until today. Uh, may so... I uh, see it? You certainly may. Here, take it. It's in this sack. Open it. Go on, go on, open it up. You can see for yourself it's certainly defective. The cutting wheel doesn't even begin to connect with the gear part. Well... You, well, just take it out of the sack. Just look at it. Oh, dear man, there's no can opener here. You can see... What? Yeah, there's bananas. Two bananas. Two bananas? Two bananas? Oh, well, see for, for yourself, sir. Two bananas? Two bananas. <laughs> We'll return to the couple next door in just a moment. The rough and tumble atmosphere of the frontier and the tense quiet of a hospital operating room are worlds apart. Yet you can bridge both these exciting worlds easily every Saturday here at CBS Radio, where most of these same stations bring you Gunsmoke and City Hospital. On Gunsmoke, United States Marshal Matt Dillon looks trouble square in the eye week after week. It's his job to preserve law and order among the pioneer settlers in Dodge City. Many of his fellow citizens have more respect for a gun than they do for justice. That makes Dillon's job a tough one. It makes it thrilling, too, and it makes for good listening on gun smoke. Enjoy a distinct change from your own routine. Follow Marshal Dillon through another daring exploit on gun smoke this Saturday. And then, just minutes later, go behind the scenes at City Hospital where Dr. Barton Crane fights for life and human happiness as ardently as Gunsmoke's Marshal Dillon, but in a different way, with scalpel instead of a gun. Well, there is certainly no sense yelling at me. You went to get your coat on, and you said, put the can opener in a sack, and I put it in a sack. I can't help it that when you came back through the kitchen, you picked up the wrong sack. Two bananas. After one hour and ten minutes of tearing around that, that, that store and finally finding the manager... Well, dear, I, I was busy fixing the casserole when you came back through the kitchen. Two bananas. I didn't see what sack you picked now, up. Now, now, I've still got to go back to that store and return that can over. All right, well, I, I'm sorry. I can't oh. see that it's my fault, dear. You were so excited. You, hello? Yes? Honestly, I... Uh... What? What's the matter? Oh! What you is the matter? On. What is it? Where did you leave Betsy? When? Bet? Oh, <gasps> Betsy! Oh my gosh, I forgot about Betsy. Well, I thought you'd left her outside the house here to play oh, when you came. Oh no, no, no! Oh, I, 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 darling, how's Mama's bed? Is she? Are you all right, dear? Is she all right, huh? Yes. Oh, look, I'll go right yes, back. I'll go yes, right yes, back yes, and get right, her. Yes, yes, all right, dear. Just yeah. a minute, yes. She said she's with some lady you were talking to who found her and took her up to her apartment. Oh, yeah, I, yes, yes, I know, well, I know, no yes. wonder it took you so long to find the manager who's this fascinating lady you oh, were look, talking to. Look, I thought she was a saleswoman. She didn't have a hat or coat on. And look, she was not that fascinating. Well, now, apparently, now, don't... so fascinating you forgot you had a daughter. Oh, look, I am not used to Betsy being with me. Anyhow, this woman is a sweet old lady. Oh, sweet old lady. Just go get your daughter, please, in... will you, really? Betsy, Dad, you'll be right after you, darling. Look, and when that can open, it turned out to be two bananas. Yeah. I just... Apartment three, a Mrs. Hennessy. Yeah. Oh, you poor darling, Dad, you'll be right there. Look, I don't live yes, right. I, I guess no, I don't no, live no, right. No, I'm no, sure. <laughs> The Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce with Francie Myers, Kathleen Comages, Ray Bramley, Frank Sutton, and Harry Davis and is produced by Walter Hart. This is Stuart Metz inviting you to listen again tomorrow for The Couple Next Door.